Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. I'm Emmanuel, I'm a Boeing 737 pilot and today we will talk about how Flight Simulator can be useful to practice for real aviation and how Flight Simulator can be used to enhance your real pilot's skills. So I've gotten this question really often. People are asking, with all these ultra-realistic simulators we're seeing today, how good are they and if I can fly the 737 in the simulator, surely I can fly the real one, right? Well, almost. So I'll prepare this, or I'll split this into four different sections. Let's start with pilot training. What can a flight simulator be useful for during pilot training? Well, first and foremost, it gets you an idea of how things look like, how things work together. It gives you an idea of how the instruments are working together. What happens if you do this and that? And that can prove very, very helpful during your theoretical training, which usually comes before the practical training. So that means that you're going to start your theoretical training with a little bit of background. That gets especially important when you are doing commercial pilot training and not just private pilot training. Because in commercial pilot training, there will be a lot of questions asked. Like, they might show you, for example, a turn coordinator and ask you, how do you get the ball centered again? Which inputs do you need to make? And that stuff where many of the colleagues in my course had to come up with rules of thumbs and basically build their own mnemonics and build their own ways to remember how to do these things while well, for me it was quite obvious since i had done it a thousand times in the simulator so i intuitively knew what i had to do there and this expands especially when you go into the area of more complex systems flight management computers auto flight systems hydraulic systems electrical systems, and so on. That's all areas where you can gather a lot of very useful information on if you carefully review your complex add-ons like the PMDG 737, like the Phoenix A320, like the Leonardo MD80. You can get some very good general knowledge there. Note that I'm saying general knowledge, not type-specific knowledge, because we'll get to that later when we come to the type rating. Other things that you can very well practice using Flight Simulator include the instrument scan. They include practice in IFR procedures like flying raw data, SIDs or STARS, flying holdings, flying DME arcs, flying procedure turns. So that's something you can very well practice in the simulator. Not the flying part of it. To be very clear about that, you cannot practice the hand flying part of things, but you can practice seeing what the instruments are going to look like when you execute certain maneuvers. And that's going to greatly help you when you get to the practical pilot training. And lastly, if you are up to get your pilot's rating, then at some point eventually you'll have to learn the radio phraseology. And that's something students usually struggle with because the training they get... you usually includes classroom training, like the instructor is sitting on the opposite end of the table and you're just going over the normal phraseology and practice that. But you have never seen it in actual action. So if you use an online network like Watsim or IVAO or Pilot Edge, then you can actually practice that phraseology in its actual use and that's going to give you a great aid first of all getting more confident pressing that push to talk button in the aircraft and then of course also you'll have an idea already of what the general flight situation is going to look like what you're going to say when and of course how to say things because saying it in the classroom is one thing but getting your act together in the real aircraft is something quite different so that pretty much covered is what you can do for pilot training. 
What you cannot do with any flight simulator you have at home for pilot training is teach practical flying skills, okay? That's something I cannot overemphasize. We have those people who are great at flying an aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator, but when you put them in a real aircraft, they'd be totally lost. That slightly also covers that question like, so if the crew of an airliner I'm a passenger on, for whatever reason cannot continue their duties, could I land the plane? My answer to that is absolutely no, you cannot land the plane. What you can do, if you have gathered the necessary knowledge ahead in Flight Simulator, what you can do is to program the autopilot to do an auto landing. That should usually work out. I'm saying usually here because there are some add-ons that are severely misrepresenting how an auto land works. So if you've learned a wrong habit there from one add-on or another, then well. But that's just this. Of course, most importantly, what the simulator cannot do is replace actual flight training and replacing an actual in flight instructor. All the knowledge you gain in flight simulation usually consists of certain small bits of knowledge and the typical flight simulator gathers a lot of these bits of knowledge, but typically flight simulators are not able to put them together the way they should, and that's something that only a good real flight instructor can tell you and can teach you. You can learn a lot of things on those YouTube videos. I'm sure that many of you who have seen my 737 videos here, if you ever happen to start a real 737 type rating, you'll have quite a bit of knowledge, but it will be up to your flight instructors to actually shape that knowledge and put it into the ways that it actually needs to be. And that's one of the important things here. What Flight Simulator cannot teach you to do is not to misinterpret the books. Many of you have read some kind of real aviation books, be it an AIP, be it an AFCOM, be it a flight through training manual. And I see all kind of interesting conclusions being drawn out of these. And that is especially visible on VATSIM, at least in my personal experience with VATSIM. They are trying to do everything by the book, and the result is that, yes, while everything they do can at some place be found in a book, usually there's um, a focus on things that are overemphasized, and they are overdoing some things and not doing others, which are more important in real life. So, that's what I mean when I say don't misinterpret the books. That's something you cannot learn in Flight Simulator because you don't have that instructor available to you to show you how it's done in real life. So, while all the knowledge you get from the books can be really helpful, what you cannot learn from the books is how to interpret them. Alright, that much for pilot training. Now let's go on. What can... A pilot who's finished their pilot license, now they are a fresh commercial pilot having 200 flight hours from flight school, and now they're applying for the airlines. How can you use Flight Simulator for that? Well, first of all, most airlines are going to send you a preparation package for their simulator screening, in which they will outline some procedures they want to see, some callouts they want to see, and most airlines are actually going to tell you, you can expect roughly this and that to happen. Now, you can use Flight Simulator to replicate and prepare for these very scenarios. You can use them to learn the callouts the company wants to see, to learn the basic flight profiles that that company wants to see. For example, when do they want me to retract the flaps at what speeds? Then, on the approach, where do they want me to extend the flaps, which speeds do they want me to have at certain positions. That's all stuff you can use Flight Simulator for to prepare for your assessments. Then, of course, you can review the raw data flying. Now, if you're coming freshly out of flight school, then you are probably very used to flying raw data. But if you have already flown a couple thousand hours in an airline and you have 
only use that flight director because your airline did not allow you to turn it off, then you might be surprised if you actually turn the flight director off how your skills may have deteriorated, even if you've hand flown a lot previously. So review raw data flying and also practicing some pitch and power values for the aircraft type that you're going to have your assessment on is something really, really useful. And that also leads me to the last point for preparation for assessments that is practicing the instrument scan. And that's really important, especially if you're a low hour pilot freshly out of flight school, you'll probably have those 20 hours done in a 737 simulator or in an A320 simulator during your multi-crew cooperation course, but that's about it. So practicing the instrument scan, what the instrument layout of an airliner looks like, that is something that you can really practice using uh, flight simulators. All right, now let's say you've passed the type rating, uh, sorry, you've passed that assessment and you're moving on to the type rating. What can you use Flight Simulator for? Well, I have extensively used my own FSX back at the time with a PMDG 737 for my 737 type rating. And one of the very first things in the first two weeks of a self-study where we had to learn the FCOM and learn all the systems particular to the 737, Many of my course's colleagues have actually used the paper mockups that the airline provided. Some of them even built their own flight deck frames of the 737 and put the paper mockups in it to get an idea where to point at everything and where to find stuff. I went a slightly different approach. I used the AFCOM of my airline and used the PMDG 737 in order to actually practice these procedures and that not only showed me the flight deck in 3D like what all the uh, colleagues have built up on but it also shows me how the systems are going to react when I do an input. It teaches me up to a certain extent why I may be doing these things. And in my opinion that provided a much better preparation for the actual first couple of simulator sessions than the paper mock-up could ever have done. Of course, my simulator partner and I also went to the paper mock-up occasionally just in order to practice where you have to touch for to find all those switches. But I tend to say we did the main preparation on the flight simulator. And that actually turned out really useful in the first couple of sessions, where basically when we had to learn the SOPs, we more or less knew the SOPs and just had to slightly refine the details in the simulator, whether some other colleagues really had to learn those SOPs in the simulator then because they've only used the paper mockup previously. And the other advantage is that if you have an add-on that's sophisticated enough, you may be able to see some of those failures in advance. Like, for example, if you have an engine failure in the 737, then there are three different kinds of failures you can have. The simple engine flame-out, an engine severe damage, or an engine separation. Now, with the PMDGs and the failure menus, you could practice those and see those warning lights that are going to come on in action. And that's really helpful to help distinguish what the different kind of failures may look like. And of course, that's also going to save you some precious time in the full flight simulators later on, which you then may be able to use to practice some of your weaker areas. All right, so that's the type rating. Now, of course, you can also use it to prepare for line training by just picking some of your company's flight plan after your type rating and just simulating a couple of those uh, real flights, then using the real operational flight plan and just to see how everything that you've learned in the type rating is actually going to evolve in an actual flight. Now, finally, the last point where the simulator can be really helpful is to revise some of your things before going into the recurrent simulator sessions. You can revise some rarely used SOPs, such as, for example, the on-ground emergency that 99% of 
me and my colleagues are never going to see an actual operation, luckily. And you can also practice some changes to the SOPs ahead of time. So, for example, in my company, there's been a recent change in when the different fire bottles are going to be deployed in an on-ground emergency. And personally, I'm a graphical learner. I need to see these things. I need to draw my artificial lines on the panels in order to be able to remember a procedure rather than just reading it in the books. And with a flight simulator, I can do that. And that really helps me remembering some of the stuff and that really helps me keeping current and preparing for my recurrent simulator sessions. Now, that same graphical memory can also be aided by just doing some of your memory items in the flight simulator. And that's exactly the kind of preparation which, in my opinion, makes the difference between a very good and an excellent grade in your simulator training certificate. All right, I hope you found this useful and I hope that you have gotten some ideas of what you can use your flight simulator for. And if you did, please leave a like, comment, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so yet. And I'm looking forward to see you all on the next video. If you really want to prepare and support the channel and make future videos possible, then I would be really glad if you could consider a small donation using the buy me a coffee link in the video description below. That shall be it. Thank you very much for joining. I hope you found this useful and I'm looking forward to see you all on the next one.